Once upon a time, there lived an old couple in an old small shack next to a forest. They were living a happy and peaceful life. Their only regret was not having a child of their own. One day, when the old lady was making cookie dough in the kitchen, her husband came in. Darling, what are you cooking today? Oh, my darling, I'm baking a gingerbread man today. The old lady kneaded the dough and cut a gingerbread man shape. After putting it in the oven, she sat down and started to wait for the gingerbread man to bake. When she could smell the delicious cookie all around the air in the kitchen, she put on her oven gloves and took the gingerbread man out. Now it was time to decorate it. She made eyes out of raisins and a cute nose using candy, and then she used some cream to make his hair and clothes, and lastly she used cherries to make some buttons for him. She had a look at her masterpiece and said, "My gingerbread man looks beautiful, but I feel like something is missing." The old lady looked at him again and, "Oh, his mouth! I forgot to make his mouth." She drew a mouth on the gingerbread man's face with the cream. "Oh yes, now you are complete, my gingerbread man." At that moment, something unexpected happened. Thank you. But but how can it be? You are talking. Gingerbread man suddenly stood up and started running. Yeah, and I can also run. The gingerbread man jumped from the kitchen bench to the chair, then to the ground, and started running fast to the kitchen door to the garden. Come back! Come back! The old lady yelled. The gingerbread man began talking whilst he was running. Yeah, run, run as fast as you can, but nobody can catch me because I'm the gingerbread man. The old lady got out to the garden and started running after the gingerbread man. The man looked out the window and saw his wife running and yelled. Hey, where are you running? The old lady answered to her husband whilst running. My gingerbread man ran away. I'm trying to catch him. The old man was speechless. The old lady ran, but the gingerbread man was so fast that it was impossible to catch him. After a short while, the gingerbread man came across a ranch. A grazing cow noticed him. Ah, oh, what a nice cookie! I should catch and eat him. The cow also began to run after the gingerbread man. Wait! Don't run! I'm gonna eat ya! Yeah! Run, run as fast as you can, and all ladies also trying to catch me, but nobody can because I'm the gingerbread man. The old lady and the cow were running after the gingerbread man, and at this time, a pig noticed the gingerbread man. A gingerbread man, true to my taste buds. Wait, and I will catch you. The gingerbread man answered the pig whilst he was running. Yeah, run, run as fast as you can. An old lady and a cow are also trying to catch me, but nobody can because I'm the gingerbread man. While they were running, the gingerbread man in front, the old lady, cow, and the pig behind him, a chicken noticed the gingerbread man while looking for some food. That has to be my lunch. So the chicken tagged along. Run as much as you want, gingerbread man. I'm gonna catch you. Yeah, run, run as fast as you can. An old lady, a cow, and a pig could not catch me. Neither can you. Nobody can because I'm the gingerbread man. The gingerbread man in front, the old lady. Cow, the pig, and the chicken—they all continued to run, but the gingerbread man was getting more and more further ahead from the others. The gingerbread man was so happy and very proud of himself. I'm the brightest and the fastest gingerbread man in the world. Yes, that's me. Nobody can catch me because I'm the gingerbread man. When he looked ahead. 
Soon the gingerbread man saw that he was coming across a river, and he stopped because he knew that water could make him melt away. Oh, n- oh what now? The old lady, cow, pig, and the chicken were close now. Right at that moment, a shifty fox appeared from behind a tree. I know how to swim. If you want, I can help you. The gingerbread man thought about it. What if you eat me? You don't have to worry. I don't want to eat you. I just want to help you get across. The gingerbread man trusted the shifty fox and jumped on his tail, holding on as tight as he could. The fox jumped in the river and began to swim. Meanwhile, the old lady, cow, pig, and the chicken came to the edge of the river and saw the gingerbread man crossing the river on the back of a fox. Helplessly, they watched them go, knowing they could not catch him anymore. The river began to get deeper and the water started to rise. Hey, fox, keep your tail up. I almost got wet. Up on my back, it's safer. The gingerbread man hopped on the fox's back. They swam for a while, but as the water got deeper, the fox's back began to sink in the water. I'm afraid that you'll get wet. Why don't you jump on my head, where it's a bit higher? The gingerbread man climbed up on his head. The fox continued to pursue his plan and dipped his head down in the water. The water has risen too much. Why don't you get on my nose? It's higher. So the gingerbread man got on top of his nose. Right when they were about to reach the shore, the fox tipped his nose, flipping the gingerbread man into the air and opened his mouth. The gingerbread man was going to fall into his mouth and the fox was going to eat him. But it didn't work. While the gingerbread man was in the air, a crow flying right above them caught the gingerbread man with his beak. The fox just stood there looking with his mouth open. The gingerbread man waited for the crow to fly a little further and asked, Do crows eat ginger cookies? Yep. When the crow opened his beak to speak, the gingerbread man fell down and began to run as fast as he could. Yeah! Run, run as fast as you can, an old lady, a cow, a pig, a chicken, a fox and a crow also tried to catch me, but nobody can because I'm the gingerbread man. The gingerbread man kept on running and did not stop. If you see a gingerbread man pass you by running, do not try to catch him because he is the gingerbread man and nobody can dare catch him. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived two best friends who were neighbours. Their names were Kay and Gerda. Kay and Gerda each planted a rose in their front yards to show their love for one another. The roses were going to grow together with them. At the end of fall, winter had come and the town was covered in snow. During the cold winter nights, Kay and Gerda's biggest fun was the fairy tale time with Gerda's grandmother. Where does the snow and the cold come from? asked Gerda. From far away, her grandmother answered and started to tell her story. There was a kingdom covered with ice and snow. The Snow Queen lived alone in the ice castle, made purely by her own magic. The Snow Queen was very beautiful and pure as ice. But the Snow Queen was evil-hearted and a lot of miracles were hidden in the magical and cold ice castle. The Icy Mirror was one of them. It was through the icy mirror that the Snow Queen's evil eyes watched everything that happened in the world.
Right at that moment, Gerda saw the Snow Queen watching them behind the window. Kay! Grandmother! Look, it is the Snow Queen watching us through the window! I'm sure it is just a cat frozen from the cold. Grandmother, can the Snow Queen really come here? <laughs> Let her try. I would throw her in the chimney so fast, she would melt and turn into the Water Queen. <laughs> Watching through the ice mirror, the Snow Queen heard what Kay said. So you will throw me into the chimney and turn me into the Water Queen? Ha! Ice sparkles! Fly with my powers! Find this boy! Make his eyes and heart mine! Let his sight! Be evil for everything around him! And let the love in his heart be gone forever! ordered the Snow Queen to her ice sparkles. Suddenly, a snowstorm started to blow in front of Gerda's house. The ice sparkles were moving fast towards Gerda. Curious about what was going on, Kay opened the window. Gerda screamed right away. Kay, stop! But it was too late. Ah, oh, my eye! Something stung my eye! Oh, my heart! What is going on? And at that moment, the Snow Queen's curse was carried out by the ice sparkles. His eyes and heart were struck, and Kay had transformed into another person. Gerda asked him what had happened, but Kay yelled at her. Nothing! I'm fine! Leave me alone! This was weird. Kay was never rude to Gerda like this. She just couldn't understand why all of a sudden he started to behave this way. Kay's rude behavior continued to the next morning. When Kay was taking his sleigh out of the garden, Gerda asked him where he was going. He snapped at her again. He jumped on his sleigh and moved away. Gerda ran after him but could not reach him. Suddenly, on her sleigh, the Snow Queen appeared from nowhere and Kay started to follow her. Gerda was stunned and couldn't do anything as they both disappeared from sight. The Snow Queen was taking him to her ice castle. Gerda spent days in front of her window, waiting for Kay to come back. Days and months passed and the winter was over. But still, there was no sign of Kay. Couldn't stand waiting anymore. Gerda made up her mind, taking only the mirror her grandmother gave her. She head out to start looking for her dearest friend, Kay. Brave Gerda passed many roads and asked everyone she met on her way if they had seen Kay. Finally, she reached the shore of a river. She looked around and there was no one to be seen that she could ask about Kay. She asked the river but could not get a reply. At that moment, a seagull came next to her. The river will definitely have an answer for you. But first, you have to give her a gift. Gerda took out her dearly beloved necklace and placed it on the water of the river. Suddenly, a miracle happened and from nowhere, a small boat appeared right in front of her. Gerda thought that the river liked her gift and was returning the favor. As soon as she hopped on, the boat started to move on its own. The boat brought Gerda to another shore. Here there was a secret garden full of flowers with all the colours of the rainbow. Gerda had not seen such a beautiful garden before in her life. But there was something missing. None of these flowers had a scent. On the other side of the garden, she saw a woman approaching her. She was the owner of the garden. Welcome, my beautiful little girl. She greeted Gerda with a big smile. And suddenly, she realized that she could smell the flowers in her garden again. I am 
sorry that I entered your garden without your permission, said Gerda. It's okay, honey. Come on, my dear. I'm glad you came. It's been such a long time anybody's come to my garden. Tell me, what are you doing here, all alone? Gerda told the flower lady that she was looking for her friend Kay, asked whether she knew about him. But the lady said that Gerda was the only person she had seen. Really? Well then let me get back to the road. I have to find Kay as soon as possible. The flower lady didn't want her to go away, so she made up a lie. Did you say Kay? Hmm, let me see. I might have seen him around somewhere. Gerda told her everything, and when the flower lady heard the Snow Queen's name mentioned, she got very worried. Snow Queen? Let her be far away from here. Cold thing. Because of her, my flowers haven't smelt for years. Then all of a sudden, the lady wanted to comb Gerda's hair. Gerda could not understand why, but the flower lady insisted. Little did Gerda know that it actually was a magic comb. The magic comb made Gerda forget about everything she knew. Only her joy remained. But the flower lady was not evil. She just did it for fun. When she woke up from her sweet sleep, Gerda did not remember anything. Not even why she was there or how she got there. But when she saw the roses on the lady's hat, she started to remember things. No magic could overcome the power of true love. Gerda didn't know how long she stayed in the Garden of Sleep, but her memories suddenly all came back. She immediately turned back to shore. The boat was still there, but she did not know which way to go or what to do. At that moment, a crow started to fly over her head. It was as if he was trying to tell her something. So Gerda started to follow him. She followed the crow for a while, until they reached the icy seas. Right in the middle of the ice, there was a pirate ship from some time ago, where the crow flew and landed. Gerda followed him on her boat and made her way to the ship. So, is this how I get to the Queen's castle with this pirate ship? Pirates appeared on the deck, and one of them, a pirate girl, approached Gerda. You go wherever we go, and that is... Nowhere! Ha! 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 Right at that moment, the Snow Queen was trying to make Kay forget about everything in his past. She succeeded up to some point, but whatever she did, Gerda would not leave Kay's memory. Gerda! Oh, Gerda! Soon your heart will turn into ice and you will not remember a thing. Finding out about her friend Kay being held captive in Snow Queen's castle, the pirate girl told Gerda to better forget about him because there was no way to get him out of there. I won't forget. He's my best friend. I have to find him, replied Gerda. The pirate girl could not really understand Gerda's persistence. Actually. She wanted her to stay there and become her friend. But Gerda was determined to find Kay. I'll do whatever it takes to rescue him. Because she had no friends, the pirate girl really admired Gerda's attitude and decided to help her. The next day, at sunrise, the pirate girl brought Gerda a reindeer. This was the fastest reindeer in the whole Snow Kingdom and she was going to show Gerda the way. Promise me that you will get that icy witch. You will also save our ship. I promise I'll return your favour, answered Gerda. Riding the reindeer, Gerda was on her way. First she had to find out how she could defeat the Snow Queen. The reindeer was going to show her how. After a long journey, they had reached the North Pole. An old wise man welcomed them. So, you finally brought the mirror, huh? Gerda could not understand how the wise man knew about her mirror. But nevertheless, she knew she came to the right place. So she took out her mirror 
and showed it to the man. So I'm going to finish the Snow Queen with this? This is a magic mirror. It shows the truth, nothing but the truth. Even if it is hidden deep inside. Because nothing was stronger than true love, the real strength in all of us was love. Gerda found out who the Snow Queen was, thanks to the wise man. If she could reveal the truth, she could beat her. Because actually, in the past, the Snow Queen was a good girl, full of love. Wherever she touched, flowers blossomed and her smiling eyes shined brighter than the sun. She was a unique and happy girl named Lilla. But everyone thought she was a little witch and did not play with or even talk to her. Left all alone, Lilla wasn't a happy girl anymore. She started to hate everything and everyone around her. Until one day, she made a wish. Everyone mean to me shall turn to ice. And then she built a castle made out of snow and lived in it far away from anyone, all alone and without love or joy. Gerda arrived at the Snow Queen's castle and entered inside. She saw Kay in one of the corners, making an ice sculpture. You're here! I found you! Kay! It's me, Gerda! Don't you remember me? Kay looked at Gerda, but he did not recognize her. Ha! Ha! His heart, like everything else here, has turned into ice. Gerda did not pay any attention to what the Snow Queen was saying. Let him go! He belongs to me now. I will turn you into ice as well. No, you won't make it. Kay, I love you. Kay slowly started to remember. Gerda, yes, I remember now. Furious. The Snow Queen shook her wand as fast as light and out came the Curse of Ice. Right at that moment, Gerda took out her mirror and held it against the curse. Hitting the mirror, the curse disappeared. And the moment had come. The Snow Queen looked at Gerda's mirror, only to see that it wasn't her reflection she saw on the mirror. It was the face of a little girl. The face of Lilla. Suddenly, the Snow Queen returned to her little and loving self and became Lilla again. Thank you very much. Now I know who I really am. I'm free again. Goodbye. Kay and Gerda looked at each other and smiled. From now on, they would never part and they would grow together. Just like the roses they had planted in their front yards. Once upon a time, there lived a brother and sister named Hansel and Gretel. Their mother had passed away when they were babies. They lived with their dad in a hut in the forest. Their dad was trying to earn their living by working as a woodcutter and was looking after the kids at the same time. A couple of years passed and struggling to juggle work and two kids at the same time, their dad decided to get married again. The woodcutter's wife was from a wealthy family and she hated the fact that they were poor and she had to live in a small ruined hut deep into the forest. Plus, she did not like her stepchildren at all. On a cold winter night, as they were getting ready for bed, Hansel and Gretel heard their stepmother talking to their dad. How are you going to get through this winter? We don't have enough food. If you do not get rid of these kids, we will all starve to death. Their dad opposed furiously. No need to argue. I made up my mind. Tomorrow we'll take them to the woods and leave them there. Hearing all that, Gretel started to cry. <laughs> <laughs> her brother Hansel comforted her. 
Please don't worry, Gretel. Somehow we'll find our way back home. Later that night, Hansel snuck out and collected as many pebbles as he could in his pockets. In the morning, they all started to walk towards the forest. Their father told them that they were going for a family hike. As they were walking, without anyone noticing, Hansel dropped the pebbles to mark the way back. In the afternoon, their dad and stepmother lit a fire and told them that they will be back soon. They walked off and vanished in the woods. Of course, they did not come back. When the night fell, the horrible sounds of all the wild animals in the forest started to echo around them. Shivering with the horrifying sounds of the wolves, Hansel and Gretel did not leave the fireside until the moonrise. Then they started to follow the pebbles shining in the moonlight and walk towards home. Well done, Hansel. This was very clever of you. When the kids came back home, their dad was very happy and surprised at the same time. Their stepmother also acted as if she was happy, but deep inside, her decision was still the same. She was very upset that they were back. After three days, the stepmother tried to get rid of them again. This time at night, she locked Hansel and Gretel's door and did not allow Hansel to collect pebbles again. But Hansel was a clever boy. When they were walking to the forest in the morning, this time he dropped the breadcrumbs that he had put in his pocket the night before and again made a trail all the way back home. Around noon, their father and stepmother made up an excuse and went off, leaving them all alone in the forest again. Realising that they were not coming back, Hansel and Gretel wanted to start walking back home before it got dark. But this time, they could not find the trail they left because all the breadcrumbs were eaten by the birds. Gretel started crying. For the first time, Hansel also felt hopeless. This time, the kids were really lost. With no food and scared to death, they wandered around the forest for three days. On the third day, they saw a bird wide as snow. The bird chirped songs with its beautiful voice for them. They forgot their hunger for a moment and started to follow the bird. The bird brought them in front of a funny looking house. This house had walls of bread, a roof made out of cake and windows of candy and was covered with colourful cream all around. Hansel and Gretel could not believe their eyes. The house looked incredibly delicious. The kids forgot all about how tired they were and started to run to the house. Just as they were both going to have a bite from the house, they heard a voice from inside. Oh! Now who is nibbling on my house? They looked around and they saw a cute and sweet old lady at the door. When they told her all about what had happened to them, she felt very bad for them and so she let them in. The inside of the house was very different from the outside. It was dark, scary and it didn't feel right. But because they were so tired and hungry, the kids did not care much. The old lady brought all kinds of food and desserts for them and the kids ate food that they hadn't had before. That night, they slept on the softest bed they had ever seen. When they woke up in the morning, the old lady wasn't there. They started to look around. At the end of the corridor, they saw a small door. When they opened the door, 
They found cases full of gold and treasure inside. They were very surprised, of course. Hansel wanted to get in and take a closer look. Right at that moment, they heard her voice again. And what do you think you are doing? When they turned around, the kids faced the witch standing right there in front of them. Apparently, the old lady was a witch leading the kids to a dungeon with a house covered with cake and candy. The kids tried to run away but the door was locked. The witch pulled Hansel by the hair and locked him in a cage. Then she dragged Gretel to the kitchen. Your brother is too skinny. Cook some food for him and make him fat. When he's in good shape, he'll be a delicious meal for me. But don't you dare eat anything. All the food is only for him. Having no choice, Gretel did what she asked for. Fortunately, Hansel was a clever and wise boy. He decided to trick the evil-hearted witch. Every night when the witch was asleep, he was digging a hole in the ground of the cage. The witch was controlling Hansel every morning to see if he gained weight or not. But Hansel wasn't eating anything his sister cooked. Instead, he was burying them in the hole that he digged. In the meantime, the witch was telling Gretel to cook more. This went on for days until finally the witch had enough. Fat skinny! I don't care anymore! Today I will make Hansel pie! She turned to Gretel. Look in the oven to see if the dough is baked enough. Although she was in fear, Gretel was also a wise girl just like her brother. She understood that the witch was going to push her in the oven. I can't get my head in there and see the dough whined Gretel. The witch pushed her aside and stuck her head inside. Gretel gathered all her strength and pushed the old witch into the oven and closed the oven door. <coughs> Gretel knew where the witch was hiding the keys. She ran straight away and saved Hansel from the cage. The flames from the oven covered the whole house. Hansel and Gretel ran away from the burning house into the woods. But they did not know where to go. A while later, they came across a river. A giant swan took them one by one to the other side of the river. The kids looked around and suddenly they realised where they were. They ran home as fast as they could. Seeing his kids, father was full of joy. With tears of joy, he explained to them how their stepmother had gone back to her parents' house soon after they had left them in the forest. And how sorry he was for all that he did and no matter how hard he had searched for them, they were nowhere to be found. The kids loved their father very much so they forgave him. But another surprise was waiting for their father. They both reached their pockets and brought out gold and diamonds they had found in the witch's home. Their father could not believe his eyes. All the problems that their family had ever had went away and they lived happily ever after.